being here. I was a little nervous about having the last panel session or being in the last panel session of the conference because I thought people would just be really exhausted, but it's a really important conversation that we want to have today. So to thank you guys for being here. What are we talking about? We're talking about COINTELPRO 2.0. Why? Because since 9-11, our national security apparatus has grown exponentially, and just about every day, activists are asking themselves, who is the informant in the room? What is law enforcement doing to target us today? Why is that suspicious person wanting to join our group? And it's really having an impact on our work. And we'll talk about the Constitution, which has nearly been shredded, but what is it doing to our movement? Unfortunately, however, we oftentimes talk about it in vacuums. This is something new. It only impacts the environmental activists or the Muslims or whoever is the sexy target of the day. Where we fail is in connecting the dots, both to history and with each other. In the 50s and 60s, the FBI rose to infamy for its targeting of activists and minority communities. It was the communists one day and black people the next. This is not news. We call today's conversation COINTELPRO 2.0 because we're arguing that there has been a resurgence, if you believe it ever ended, of COINTELPRO 1.0. What was that, you ask? One of our panelists will talk about it in more detail, but if I were to sum it up in one sentence, it was a series of secret and illegal operations conducted by the Federal Bureau of Investigation that was intended to spy, infiltrate, disrupt, and discredit political organizations. So I'll put it out there if there's an FBI agent today in the audience. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we know that this conversation is on the record. I really hope that you'll enjoy our videos. <laughs> we actually know you'll enjoy our videos. And we have to connect the dots across communities. It's not just a Muslim issue today, just as it shouldn't have been only an African-American issue when Martin Luther King Jr.'s work was being disrupted. When the FBI shreds the Constitution, it impacts all of us. So how are we going to do this? We'll show you a quick video, I'll introduce you to the panelists, actually I'll introduce you to the panelists first, we'll show you a video, we'll have some discussion, Q&A, and then we'll close out with another video that we hope will, will turn the conversation around and, and maybe make us laugh just a little bit. So who do we have with us here today? Two down for me is Shahid Buttar, he leads the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, a national grassroots network in their effort to defend civil liberties and constitutional rights threatened by law enforcement and intelligence agencies. He's a constitutional scholar, grassroots organizer, civil rights lawyer, and my favorite, an electronica MC and poet. Hoping he'll throw down at water fire. Or is it fire water? I'm not really sure water tonight. Fire. We'll see. We're making requests. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing in, uh, further down is Rose Regina Lawrence. She was a daytime coordinator for Occupy Wall Street jail support from October of 2011 to May of 2012 and was largely responsible for developing the response system that jail support in New York uses. She's a founding member of Building Bridges for Collective Liberation, a new group coming out of Occupy that's focused on developing tools and trainings to help activists and members of targeted communities. She's been involved in anti-authoritarian anti organizing since 2003. She's a legal worker member of the NYC chapter of the National Lawyers Guild. Next to her is Cyrus McGoldrick, an American Muslim activist and lyrical artist of Iranian and Irish descent. Really cool mix if you ask me. A recent graduate of Columbia University, he's now the civil rights manager at the New York chapter of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Cyrus also serves on the advisory council for Getting Out and Staying Out, a program dedicated to helping young men coming out of prison stay out of prison. He performs original music as the Rascal Khan, blending reggae, jazz melodies, and hip hop lyrics, and Islamic activism. Next to me, Watch out for her, she's the spiciest one on the panel. <laughs> Linda Sarsour is a working woman, a community activist, a mother of three, ambitious, outspoken, and independent. Linda shatters stereotypes of Muslim women while also treasuring her religious and ethnic heritage. She's a Palestinian Muslim American and a self proclaimed pure New Yorker, born and raised in Brooklyn. She serves on the National Advocacy Director for the National Network for Arab American Communities. That's a very long and locally serves as a director of, of, Arab American, of the Arab American Association in New York, a social service agency serving the Arab community in the city. Who am I? I get to be the moderator today. My name is Zahra Bilu. I'm a civil rights lawyer.